This one can be tons of fun or extremely stressful. Sushi is easily one of the hardest dishes to master as a chef. To become a true sushi chef, it takes like 10 years of practice. It's a true art form that takes really intricate knife skills, exceptional hand-eye coordination with delicate hands, and just lots of patience. But that doesn't mean noobs like us can't make it at home just to have fun. I've done it before and it always comes out great, even if it isn't the prettiest. The flavors are surprisingly on par, at least with local sushi joints, and that's because this is one of those foods that relies on the purity and quality of the ingredients that make it up. High quality raw fish and properly seasoned sushi rice are always a winner. So you don't need me to tell you that I'm not an expert at this, but I'm I'm still going to show you how I make it at home. I'm going to start by getting the sushi rice going, and you do need a special type of rice for this to hold the roll together. It's called sushi rice or short grain rice. And I'll go right off the bat and say I wouldn't use this brand here. I usually order mine online and I'll link it below, but I didn't have time to wait before I made this, so I bought this at a local supermarket and it sucked. It wasn't really even that short grain and it kind of fell apart as I was trying to roll the rolls. Anyway, I'm using about 360 grams or two cups of dry uncooked rice. It's very important to rinse this rice a few times before you cook it. You just fill the bowl and agitate the rice for about 20 seconds before replacing the water. It's very important to wash most of that free starch off the outside so that these don't clump together when you cook them. I know all the other YouTubers say to wash your rice, but I'm gonna say to rinse it. I don't think soap is necessary for this, but you do you. I usually do three rounds of rinsing and then on the fourth round is what I just add water to cook it with. Fill that up until it reaches your first knuckle and then pop that onto a rice cooker and let it go. In the meantime, we can get our rice seasoning ready. It's very simple. For this amount of rice, it's 60 mils or a quarter cup of rice vinegar. 20 grams or about two tablespoons of sugar and six grams or a teaspoon of kosher salt. I quickly get that over medium heat and just swirl it around until everything dissolves. And then whenever your rice is done, you just dump that into a big bowl. You can kind of use the paddle to distribute the seasoning as you pour it across the rice. But I'll be honest, I really don't think that does anything, even though it's traditional. I might get destroyed for saying that, but if you mix it all together, it's going to be fine anyway. So just mix all that to combine and set it aside. You should let it cool a little bit before you start making the rolls. We can get all the other ingredients ready. You can make this with whatever you want, whatever vegetables or proteins or fish, whatever you want. And a lot of people don't like raw fish in their sushi, so they make it with cooked fish or cooked meat, whatever. Again, all that's up to you, but I'll show you what I did. I started with some fresh king crab meat. I bought these legs at my local supermarket because I had to film a video for a sponsor and just figured I would use the leftovers for sushi. That being said, I would probably never go out of my way to buy king crab legs to make sushi with. The imitation crab tastes like 70% as good, but it's like 10% of the cost and it's much more widely available. But if you are going to use king crab legs like I did, I just grabbed a pot and added a couple of inches of simmering water, then one of these steamer baskets and all of my crab legs. I covered that in steamed for like 10 minutes just to heat everything through. These legs are always pre-cooked before they make it to the supermarket. Then and when they come out, I just break them into their sections, and using either a fork or kitchen shears, you just cut them open so you can get the meat out. Try your best to get it out in one piece, but there is a lot of cartilage and other stuff to go through, so it does break apart. It's okay, it's going to be hiding in the sushi. If you're using a fork, you just get one of the teeth into the leg and start peeling off to the side. They're really not that hard to break open. But like I said, if you buy imitation crab, then you can skip all that and you're right to this step where you can just add it straight to the sushi roll. I also bought one of these Alaskan salmon fillets. I love raw salmon in and on top of my sushi. Usually I can find sashimi grade at Sam's, but I couldn't find it this time. So I just made sure to buy farm raised and took the risk. Wild caught salmon is almost always going to get you sick if you eat it raw. And there's still risk associated with farm raised, but you have a lot less chance. Either way, you should still look for something that says sashimi grade on the side just to be sure. Anecdotally, I ended up being fine after eating this raw, but I am not your doctor. So I just first split this into some even sized fillets so I can save a lot of this for later. And I just keep one or two behind to make the sushi with and even probably some poke after for leftovers. So like I said, I'm going to be using this inside and on top of the sushi. So I'm going to make two different types of cuts. The first for on top is some thinly sliced pieces so that they lay over the roll. I like to find the white marbled part of the salmon for this because it looks the best. Just taking a sharp knife and sliding it kind of across the fillet as I go down. It should make for a wider and thinner fillet. I'm no expert and it doesn't need to be perfect and I still think this came out pretty good, so do your best. I usually cut like four or five of these per roll. The other cut is just gonna go inside, so I just make these like thick matchsticks. Just do your best to make these even so the thickness is the same, but it doesn't really matter, it's not a huge deal. I just get a handful of those to fit inside a couple of rolls. Next up, I love crunchy cucumber inside of my sushi, so I'm going to grab a cucumber, zip off the ends, and then cut this into a couple of sections, and then I'm just cutting this down into tiny matchsticks. I'll save the other half to make coins for the poke bowls later. Super easy, and this provides a really nice freshness inside of your sushi. Lastly, I've got an avocado to put inside and also on top of the sushi rolls. So I split that in half, and then I like to peel off the outside and put this face down. That way I can go down and get these really thin slices across the avocado. You've probably seen people do this super fast, but like me, you can do it really slow and still get the job done. 
Some of these are going to go inside of the sushi rolls and others are going to go on top like the salmon, but they're all going to be the same cut. Then you just need some sheets of nori to make the rolls with, that's some seaweed. Those get cut in half because a half is going to make one roll. Now that we're ready, we can grab one of these sushi mats, which you can find on Amazon, I'll link it below. I always wrap mine in plastic to keep the mess to a minimum. I'm going to start by laying down one of my sheets of nori. There is a waxier, smoother side of this as well as a rougher side. We're going to put the waxy side down and the rougher side goes up so that the rice can stick better to that side. I keep a little bowl of water nearby because that's going to help the rice from sticking to my hands. But I'll grab a couple handfuls of the rice and spread it across my nori sheet. Just really be sure that this is an even layer and really try to press this into the edges. Again, none of this has to be fast. The professional chefs do this quickly because they're making a lot of this and because it looks cool. But if you're just making a few rolls at home, then speed's really not that important. And I like my rice on the outside of the rolls, so I'm going to flip this over. To this one, I'm just going to add a few strips of salmon, some of the cucumber, and a little bit of avocado. You definitely don't want to overfill these, but you'll get the hang of it as you practice and get used to the amounts. The rolling is one of the hardest parts, and it's going to take some practice. But you just hold the fillings in place with your forefingers, and then grab the back of the sushi mat with your thumbs. Start to roll it while keeping the ingredients in place and try to get the seaweed to touch itself on the other side. Then you can close up the bamboo mat and kind of press this whole thing together. Ideally, the seaweed will seal to itself on the other side to give you a cohesive roll. And as you can see, I didn't really heed my advice from earlier, which was to let the rice cool off a bit. If it's too warm, it'll make the seaweed too flimsy and it won't be able to seal itself. And the rice really won't stick to it either and it'll kind of stick to the sushi mat and give you a big mess. As I was cutting this roll, I realized it was going to be my practice roll and I wasn't going to present it. Still good eats though, but let's move on to a real roll. So with slightly cooler rice, I'll start with a couple more handfuls of it on another sheet of nori. Spread that out and then I'm going to add some black sesame seeds to this so they show on the outside. Flip that over and once again add some salmon, cucumber, and avocado. Carefully roll it up like before and just make sure it's secure. This time it didn't stick nearly as badly and you have a really nice looking sushi roll. I like cutting mine down the middle and then cutting two more times on either side to make six pieces. You can put plastic wrap on top to keep it together. It's also a good idea to have a wet knife, but you can add those to a cutting board or plate for presentation. I'll show you one more roll, starting again with rice on the nori, and then flip that over, and I'm gonna add some of the real crab legs. And then just some cucumber on this. I'll save the avocado for the outside because this is gonna be a rainbow roll. So once that's rolled up, I'm gonna add a few pieces of that thinly sliced salmon, and then alternate that with the thinly sliced avocado. Kind of tuck those pieces into each other so they stay firm, and I like to cut this kind of roll with plastic wrap because there's stuff on top. A real rainbow roll adds things like tuna or mango to add more colors, but these two are fine. I repeated with a couple more rolls like this and then laid them out on my cutting board. I'm just jazzing it up a bit more with some hoisin sauce and some kewpie mayo and then some sriracha as well. These things brighten everything up and then make it taste better as well. Give yourself a little bit of soy sauce and if you like that fake wasabi stuff, you can add that too. But now it's time to sit back and enjoy your artwork and then get to eat it as well. A really fun thing to do for something like date night if you ever need an idea but I had fun doing this by myself as well, so let's get to the mukbang. As always, these things take me much longer than normal people should take making recipes like this, but I just blame that on my lack of knowledge with cameras and recording. Either way, I'm ready to dive into some homemade sushi. Like I said, not the prettiest presentation, but I've been here before and I'm really not good at making this look artsy, but the taste shines through every time, but I'm gonna get started with one of these rainbow rolls. Cheers. I mean, that hits just like your local sushi restaurant does. It's a simple food with not too many flavors added to it. You're supposed to taste the pure flavors of the fish shining through. And speaking of, I'm gonna get some of this crab as well. That's super high quality stuff. Again, I don't think it's worth buying king crab over imitation crab in most cases, but when you are able to treat yourself, it's quite an experience. But this is one of those things that's really fun to do with a partner or with your family. It's an activity that's really all about the technique. And the more times you do it, the better you get at it. I don't know if I'm that much better than the first or second time that I've made this, but I don't really spend a lot of time doing this, so I don't really know. So as you guys know, my point in these videos is not to be the say all be all of different cultures, recipes like this. I don't have really deep knowledge of anything culinarily, to be honest. So instead of trying to pretend, I'm just showing you what I've learned from watching videos, reading articles and stuff like that. And hopefully I can be more relatable than professionals are with being a home cook. I don't know, I'm slowly upgrading my equipment little by little. I have a few more things that I need to buy to make this a little bit more sustainable for me. But I appreciate all your patience with me as I continue to upload very, very sparingly. And just thank you for being on this journey with me. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you all for watching. Be blessed, and I'll see you next time. If I get food poisoning from that salmon, I'm quitting YouTube.